Um, good evening, everybody. I'm not sure where to look. Uh, welcome to the work session, town board work session of September 20th, 2022. Can I please have a motion to open the work session? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we are um, here today for a joint meeting with the planning board, but first we are going to discuss the fascinating authorization to participate in the Hudson Valley Regional Council. <coughs> Sabrina, you want to talk to us about that? Good evening, absolutely. So as a climate smart community, the Hudson um, Valley Regional Council uh, is the entity that your DEC is working with to uh, promote climate smart community programming. They have a pilot programming for climate smart communities to undertake um, uh, an update of our greenhouse gas emissions from government operations and then to ultimately update a or to create, in our case, update our climate action plan. Um, so we are very interested, members of the Climate Smart Task Force are interested in working um, to update our greenhouse gas emissions. The last time they were updated, I believe they are based off of 2005. Um, emissions, so they would be updated to 2021 emissions, and then we would have an opportunity to update our 2008 climate action plan. Um, in order to do so, they're looking for a letter of commitment from the town to participate in the program. Is there a, a, a what's the financial obligation, if any? There is none. There is no financial obligation. It is just a willingness to participate, to, to coordinate, to provide data and assistance when um, in pulling the information together. Okay. Uh, any so, other it, questions for Sabrina? No. I think we are in approval, in agreement. Very, Wonderful. Very persuasive, Sabrina. Yes. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, Thank you, Sabrina. But didn't we look You're at our greenhouse gas Sabrina. emissions to get to silver? We, we, we reported our greenhouse gas emissions. Got it. And so, so on our website, we do something called benchmarking, where we track the, um, the energy expended in all of town-held buildings. That information and the data that is input into that benchmarking program was seen as, a, as a, an action item for, the, um, for our, our, our climate smart actions, which helped us achieve silver status. So we, because we were so proactive in becoming a climate smart community, and Lisa, I'm sure you're aware of, of how long we've been doing this, we're kind of ahead of the game in certain areas. Um, many municipalities don't have climate action plans. We actually have one, so we are, we are updating information older information to newer data. All right. Great. Sounds good. It's, it's, it's wonderful. wonderful. It's wonderful. And, and the Climate Smart Task Force members are very excited and very, um, very interested in doing this work. So it's really, really great to have them be undertaken and updated. And it's consistent with the policies and the comprehensive plan that talked about this. So check marks all over the place. All right. Perfect. Thank you, and uh, you'll just prepare whatever letter, the, these letters I need. You have, you have a draft letter. Um, I will make sure they're finalized and ready for your signature tomorrow. Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right. So don't go too far, Sabrina. I'm here. Don't worry. She's here for the duration. I uh, am. All right. Why don't we go and check to number two? So we have Bob Kirkwood, the head of our planning board here. I feel very alone. <laughs> <laughs> I think Dick is on, on board, but I think I thought Tom and Elda. Dick is on. He he had to go take care of some things. He'll be back um, in a moment. He was on earlier with me. Okay. Um, and is is ULI joining us to give us a presentation? ULI was not invited to give us a presentation tonight. My understanding that this was a discussion between the boards based on the communication that was submitted to your board by um, Chairman Kirkwood and Tom Curley um, and then forwarded to the rest of the planning board. Okay, well, let's wait a minute or two. 
Because we did tell them it was going to start at 7. We do have some no, administrative oh, items okay. we could go through. Um, sure. Let's, let's do that. Those first. Okay. okay um, first one is payment of claims. Uh, next is adoption of minutes and adoption of monthly reports from all the different departments. Mm -hmm. uh, the next is a resolution authorizing the acceptance of a declaration of common um, access easement and maintenance agreement and letter of credit. That's in connection with 15 Marketplace. Um, it's a variance for a new residence and these are the recommended um, agreements um, that the, the boards require in order to uh, move this application along. Um, the next is authorization to purchase water meters but from DPW. It's uh, just shy of twenty thousand uh, dollars in water meters. Um, and is that budgeted? <clears throat> yes, um, and it, this is our sole distributor. Neptune meters. We only use a, a single type of meter throughout town. Water meters. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and so this is a purchase from the sole distributors. Um, we knew that we were going to have a lot of water meters to be purchased to, in connection with these village. It's like that. Um, and last but not least um, is uh, authorization for a letter in support um, of an MTA grant for railroad crossing elimination. Can I talk to that for a second? Sure. So I'm sure everyone remembers the terrible crash in, in Valhalla um, and years ago. And at that time, we started advocating for a bridge over the um, Sawmill River Parkway at Roarenbrook Road. Um, for a number of reasons. First, it's a busy, busy intersection, but also given its proximity to the high school and the very young drivers who drive there and the backup that we get there. And we have personally seen people sitting on the train tracks waiting to get up the hill. Um, so we were very concerned. So we advocated for that for a while. Um, now with new townhomes coming on in Chappaqua Crossing, as well as the shopping center that's there. It's even a busier intersection. Um, there were schematics drawn up years ago, and I, what was it, like $70 million at that time? It was, you exaggerate, it was 50. It was 50, okay. <laughs> we said 30, between 30 and 50. Okay. Um, no, so right. now <laughs> it appears the MTA is actually considering moving forward with this um, with an 80-20 split where they would pick up, I believe, 80% of the cost. Federal government, 80%. And the federal would pick up 80 and state would pick up the other 20, so it would actually cost the town not much of anything. Um, we did get them. We, I had a, we had a call with them, I think it was yesterday, and they did uh, affirmatively say that if this moved forward, we would have significant input into the design, what it looks, you know, what it looks like, where it is, as well as, you know, materials and tree planting and everything else. So we, we would have significant input in, into that. Um, so what this really is, they can't, they're looking for a grant application. They're doing a grant application from the government. I think the deadline is October 1st. And it will significantly enhance their the application if we, uh, you know, provide support to say this is something we we'd like to do moving forward. So, did I cover it? I think I covered it pretty well. Very well. Okay. Any questions from anyone? No questions. I think it's a no brainer. Uh, Pursuing it for some time. Um, I'm curious, just just to, for the education of us and 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 the residents, how long they think it's going to take, what kind of traffic they should expect, just so mm -hmm. that they can be prepared should it happen, if they're even that far down the road. I, I don't think Literally. they're that far down <laughs> the road, but I I, I think it's it's going to take gonna quite a, a while. But one thing we I did, you know, we looked again at where the proposed. Uh, bridge would be and it's south. actually it it's yes. slightly south yeah. of the current right. crossing right. um grade crossing which means that they could build that and traffic could still cross the sawmill over there at the same time um which would be very helpful but you know I, nothing gets built quickly so i think once it finally got approved which i believe would take a few years anyway then to build it will take a few more so there's additional yeah. work that needs to be done in the feasibility analysis. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. I, I think it's an excellent idea. In fact, I was there um, when public officials first came and took pictures in front of it, and mm -hmm. we didn't think much would come of it. But I'm, I'm glad it, things move slowly, <clears throat> if at all. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering, 
about the area that the bridge would be built and the possibility of making connections. So for instance, with the chap line, and I know on the other side, there's the Pine Cliff Audubon Sanctuary. And I mean, it could be a great opportunity to make connections throughout the hamlet with uh, walkways and bike paths, perhaps. So you might have the chap line as a walking bike path, and then perhaps a little path along that bridge going to the sanctuary, and then you know, more bike paths to connect to then, um, you know, the center of town again could make a really fantastic loop. Um, you know, it could be a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. And we, we will definitely work with them to do yeah. that. And we've spoken to them conceptually also about the chap line, that that's something we're considering here or there as well. So they're very right. aware of that. Right, so it would be that. a great, great collaboration if possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a historical path to the Pine Cliff area. There is. I've, wa yeah. I've walked I've it. I've looked That's, for it, but I... Yeah, I have actually can... walked it, and I'm wondering if there could be some upgrading. I mean, maybe that could be our part of the expense, some upgrading of those paths. Um, to make them a little bit bigger, maybe some gravel bike paths, which are minimally invasive. Um, well, gravel you know, just, just... bike paths are never a good idea. Oh, really? Yeah, because it, it annoys people on the bicycles, the gravel. I've, I've ridden on them. There's some beautiful ones in Acadia National Park Those in Maine. Those are carriage trails. I mean, it's a very different yeah. together. Right. Um, I mean, yeah, it's a whole, that's a whole thing. But, well, but I, I, I do don't, agree I that it would be good to, to see if we paths, can put but it's a, it's a walking great opportunity. paths and bike paths yeah. attached yeah. to that. That would be great. Yeah. So like like the bridge over, you know, like the, the Tappan, not that this is the Tappan Sea <laughs> Bridge, but to have a walking, right. a Go designated ahead. walking yeah. path over it would be, would be nice to, to connect the two areas would yeah, be yeah. great. That's a good suggestion. All right, so I think we're all in favor? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, that's a resounding yes. Looks like we have Perfect. two more of your team here. I know, right. there's Eldad. Yes. I thought Eldad was coming in person, but... Are you gonna scold them? Okay. No, no, not at all. So uh, I think Kanan was going to show up. Uh, I thought Tom was coming first, but well, it's seven or one. Right. We'll yeah, he likes to two. make a, I don't know. a grand entrance. <laughs> now he's the one. He's the one who's worked with this organization. Yes. yes. So, okay. He's kind of important. Yes. All right. Well, let's give him one more minute. You want, well, to, you want to go? Want to do the resolutions now? That's in the town board, board meeting. Yeah. Other than this, though, we really don't um, have anything else on the agenda, right? Not for work session, no. Right, so then we'll have a huge gap until eight anyway, right? Well, we're gonna discuss. Could we make this part of the meeting? I mean, procedurally? You can take it out of order if you want. It's fine. Take this out of work session, open the meeting? Sure. Can you can turn the volume up. up. Wow. We get oh, we don't actually board. have any. Uh, we just close it, go back and are the mics session. on? We don't have any mics here, here, do we? The mics no. are right above yeah. you. Oh. I'm saying we might as well. They are? This, I Dick, you can't hear us, you can't hear us, guys? 59 minutes, I guess. Probably. What mics? Dick? Oh, those? Squares? So, so that's the, looks um, like they're frozen. the one square. Oh, yeah, that, right above um, Vicky. Looks like it's perforated. Yeah. It's oh, actually a, a microphone system. Oh. 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 oh, that's cool. Yes. That yeah. tile. Wow. Yeah. Well, either way, they're frozen, so. Oh, <laughs> or they're really intently paying attention. <laughs> I have to say, at least no one is doing anything like embarrassingly like yawning. In the of it. <laughs> Did we just lost everybody? Uh, oh, We're having technical difficulties, everybody. We will be right back with you. <laughs> Do you want to jump out and jump back in and just? For the sake of, uh, um, yeah, we could. I'm just gonna text them so I'm sure he's coming. Do I, that. I, 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 so, can I have a motion to temp temporarily adjourn the work session and open the town board meeting? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So, let's, we're not going to discuss anything, but we can just do some resolutions that we were going to do if anyone has those. All right. Um, I move to approve the payment of claims. An amount of $390,460.54 listed on the summary pre-check writing report detail voucher detail report. Both dated September 18th of this year. Checks will be cut and mailed to each claimant listed on Wednesday, September 21st, 2022. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Uh, I move to authorize the hiring of Jacob Day to the position of seasonal labor with the Recreation and Parks Department at an hourly rate of $16 per hour, effective October 11th, 2022. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, we're not doing that one just yet. We're going to discuss that in... We can hold off on yeah. that one. What about the... Do we have one for the Holocaust and Human Rights? I only have three. Um, we got an email. We got an email. email to oh, the we board. We just got an email. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, along with the um, so okay. consent there, agenda, we could do And this. do we need to awesome. formally um, resolve these letters of support? It's in... There's a, um, that's a second resolution that, that was, was just sent. That was just emailed? Yeah. Okay. okay. Would you like just, to read just the... Uh, yeah, go, go ahead. All right, so... Um, authorization to appoint Holocaust and Human Rights Committee. I move to authorize the appointment of Sarah Stern as a member of the Holocaust and Human Rights Committee for a two-year term effective October 1, 2022 to September 30, 2024. Aye. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, Tom. There he is. What about the uh, consent? Can we do it? Authorization to participate in the Hudson Valley Regional Council program to update Newcastle's greenhouse gas inventories and associated components of the climate action plan. Sorry, sorry. Have you read this whole thing? I just skipped to the uh, resolve. Can the, the I just give a yada, yada, yada? The resolve? Right. <laughs> whereas, yada, yada, whereas, <laughs> yada, yada, yada. Now, therefore, be it resolved. <laughs> the town board of the town of Newcastle authorizes the town supervisor to provide written confirmation of participation in the HVRC GHG update program, including the support of the Climate Smart Communities Task Force, which includes staff support of the Newcastle Planning Department. Can I have a second? All in favor? Aye. 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 And do we need to approve the letter in support of the MTA grant application? You can't, it's not necessary, but you certainly can. I think it's actually part of the consent agenda. Oh, is it? Yeah. It is indeed. Yep. Last okay, perfect. Did we do the consent agenda? So we didn't do the consent no, we agenda. Do. We should do the consent agenda. Yes, let's do that. Let's do that. Chris, you're on a roll. It's giving me a hold. Uh, so, uh, so I move to adopt the consent agenda. Oh, I move agenda. to adopt the consent agenda listed, Items. listed on the town board meeting agenda for this evening. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, all right, so can I have a motion to adjourn the town board meeting and go back into work session? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we're back. Hey, Tom. <laughs> so I think we have everyone back. Can you all hear us on Zoom now? Yes. Okay. All right, great. We hear you. You're no longer frozen. And uh, we have here in person uh, Bob Kirkwood and Tom Curley from the planning board. And I see Eldad and uh, Dick on there as well on, on uh, Zoom. All right, so the purpose of this joint work session was to discuss sort of moving forward with uh, charrettes or public outreach to discuss what, if any, you know, development people might like to see in the Hamlet. Um, if there is any. So um, I know that the planning board had sent us a memo about ULI. You met with them. Uh, so I wanted to just discuss that. We, we sort of put an RFP on hold. I would still say we should do one because it's my understanding that ULI will still charge us close to $150,000 to do any work that they would do. Um, so that certainly warrants um, an RFP. Uh, but I'd be happy to hear, I'd love to hear what you have to say, why you think we should be looking at them, um, and then if anyone has any thoughts. Well, uh, I, I just them. one one correction on that. This is not, that was just my memo, so the planning oh, okay. board hasn't discussed it, so it's not a planning board memo. So okay. I don't want people to think that Eldad and Derek and Kanan and Tom necessarily agree with what I wrote. All right. And I, think, I was trying to be very clear on that because it was during the summer. Right. So I would, I figured I'd duck underneath while we're on vacation. But um, uh, I think Tom is, is better versed at this. He's spoken with these folks. We, we, we spoke, Tom and I spoke directly with this guy, Tom Eifert, um, uh, via Zoom once or twice. Uh, but Tom served on some of these panels and has more experience on it. My thought on this was that um, before we got going too far down the road with public outreach, whether we call it, whatever we call it, charrettes or otherwise, 
we wanted to make certain that we didn't make another mistake and, and had a better idea of what we wanted for the, the end game, the goal. Um, so I guess the letter was intended to be um, just uh, not really a break, but really a, um, a thought just to let's, let's consider what we want to do. Um, Tom and I served on the initial committee that did the, uh, the other work on the, uh, uh, what turned out to be the, uh, uh, you know, the, the other zoning. And uh, one of the problems that Tom and I had from the get-go when we were on that committee, and we voiced it many times, was we wanted to make certain that you know, we had a vision. We had an idea first of what we wanted to do. And uh, I think it was just presumed that we knew what, what that was. And I think in the end, uh, that was one of the problems. We got going without knowing where we wanted to go, what the community wanted, uh, without the so-called vision. So I was very big on vision. Uh, Tom's very big on vision, but we got uh, railroaded and we just went straight ahead on this. And, and that's, that was fine. I mean, we got it. I mean, you know, we, you know, we were in the minority and that was the way it goes. But I think um, from my perspective, I would, I would hate to see us again go down that road again and end up with uh, you know, disappointment uh, uh, in the community once again that we haven't achieved what we wanted to, to achieve, whatever that is, by the way. Uh, I, I would, my own personal uh, viewpoint is I look at the hamlet, I drive through the hamlet twice a day. I don't see it really as broken. I don't see it as something that has to be you know, completely redone. I think uh, maybe some incremental work, but not, with, with all the work that you've done on infrastructure, I mean, the place is really, really shows nicely. It, it, you know, we're attracting people coming here. So I think it could be tweaked. I think it could be improved. But uh, I don't think that uh, our perspective, my perspective, is that this is not an emergency where we're in desperate uh, straits here. And, and this has got to be completely revamped and redone. What we did back in the 40s, 50s, and we have to just lose all that, or 60s, 70s, and all that kind of stuff, and, and move forward with something totally different. So. Um, but I think there's some real opportunities here, and um, but I think it's it's important to get community outreach. I think it's important to get community outreach within the framework of possibilities, uh, feasibility, uh, constraints, so that people recognize it. I mean, Tom has made a comment, and I'll shut up and let him talk. You know, we've always spoken about the town property; it's all there. You know, we have six acres, eight acres, whatever it is. But the bottom line is, it's all spoken for at this point. So to move anything. We'll move anything into that property. You have to move something out of it. We have to figure out where that's going to be, what the cost is, et cetera. So uh, it's not that easy because the property is really spoken for. So I'll shut up. So we, just to interrupt for a second, we lost, we lost internet access again. So they're not here with us. Uh, so I don't know if you want to hold off on the rest of the conversation. I mean, we certainly have a quorum here, and you're not a... I mean, we can pull them back in. You're not, this isn't a formal meeting yep. for the planning board, so I'm comfortable continuing the discussion. Before we move on, though, I, hmm? They can hear you. Oh, they can hear us. Can we just can't see them. The whole internet went down in here for a second. I got to reboot something. Okay. But is, is, okay, the, is, the, the, is the public? Is the public oh, no one can hear us? All, all, no, all the Zoom is down for the moment until I reach. So, so we should just. But can people at home so hear us? Right. If like if, if this is recording. You go into the meeting. You're uh, no, because you're not on Zoom. If you're not on the air. Right. What I'm saying. They'll hear it on the recording. They can't watch it live. Ah. Uh, okay. Should we wait for the? Yes. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have a briefly adjourn. Okay. Because no one can hear us. We've got a quorum, so we've got a quorum. You can proceed, but no one's going to, this is something I think you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just Great. as an alternative. Is so, was anything that Bob said? Nothing's recorded. You have to start over. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you have to say it again. Right. So now you have, okay. you have, uh, we have a plan B. This All right, so we're, we're going to take a, a five minute adjournment. Um, so, are we, just, just, just so I have a sense. We, we already covered a lot of this, right? So we're yeah. like way ahead of schedule. Yes. Right, yes. So five minute adjournment. Not, not a Second. Okay. So moved. All Aye. in favor. <laughs> Aye. <laughs>
I forgot what we were talking about at this point. No, no, we were talking about ULI. I'm not sure if you guys on Zoom heard everything before we lost you. So, um, okay, well, before um, we move to that, I, I just want to say I agree with Bob what you said, that the town, the Chappaqua Hamlet, is not broken. I personally do not think we need full-scale rezoning of the Hamlet. Um, but I think appropriate potentially incremental development if there are things that that you know residents and stakeholders want to see I think that's something we should look into and consider but I agree that I don't think we need a whole scale rezoning I think our town the Hamlet's doing amazing people seem very happy there's a lot of vitality a lot more than was there before um, we have a few new stores coming in as well so um, you know I think that and then with, with the proposed development that's going to happen maybe on North Greeley, at some point I think that we can do things appropriately, incrementally, and thoughtfully. So that being said, Tom, do you want to talk about your do, thoughts do you want, about ULI? Sorry to interrupt. Do you want to, I mean, not to put you on the spot, but do you want to maybe paraphrase what you said before just for posterity? For, for um, well, um, first, you know, the letter I sent was really just my letter, not the uh, planning boards, and we haven't discussed it. So and um, uh, I, I think Lisa summed it up pretty well. And, and uh, the only thing I would add is that, um, you know, I think we really need to work on our vision uh, as a community. And uh, I think that there are tremendous opportunities still out there that are untapped. And again, we're, we're going to be talking about the public property and what that all means. But we need to be careful about this whenever we speak about these things. I think we need to frame the, the, the conversation within... Uh, practicality, reality, constraints, um, and, and how all that works. And people have spoken very loosely over the years about the public property. We have all this property, but yeah, we have all this property, but it's all in use. It's all spoken for. So whatever we do down there uh, is going to cause some sort of disruption somewhere else. So we need to be cognizant of that. Uh, it may be a good disruption. It may be uh, an opportunity. But those are the kinds of things I think we, we need to frame our conversation before we go, you know, community-wide and just say, what do we all want, you know, without any kind of uh, constraint. Mm -hmm. so, and I think, uh, from what I understand, we're talking with uh, uh, the fellow at ULI and Tom, this is a firm uh, that could help us in, in that area in terms of getting us some information about uh, practicality and constraints and uh, how it might really work in the real world. And that's it. All right. So, Tom, you've worked with them before? Uh, yeah. First, let me say I'm so glad that uh, Bob sent that letter because it gives me credible deniability now. <laughs> um, and the other four members, too, by the way. Um, yeah, let me, let me first, a um, little bit of history how we came to this point, you know, with ULI, is that I sat in this room like, a few weeks ago when um, there was a discussion of doing an RFP for Charette. And it just occurred to me that maybe we're moving too quickly by saying, well, let's do a Charette because a Charette is what you do. And uh, yeah, a Charette is what you do for certain problems that you want to investigate. And, and, but there are maybe other ways to get to what you need to get to. And so um, I immediately thought about the ULI because of my experience with them. But um, also in response to one of the concerns I've had, and I know Jeremy's had, and probably all of you, is that there needs to be some aspect of real feasibility to, that well, comes of out of all of this. And I didn't see, I'm not suggesting that it wouldn't be possible or true, but I didn't see in a traditional charrette process, which is tends to be more open-ended and people coming up with sort of wish list things. Uh, and it all depends on how it's run, so don't get me wrong. But um, that there would be not sort of as Bob was suggesting, the guardrails, you know, the, the you come out of it with something that's actually actionable, right? And in my experience with the ULI, it's, first of all, it's not a firm, it's, it's a, a, an association, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but, and it's like 40,000 members, 45,000 members. But in my experience with them, 
is that they bring people to the table who have actual professional experience. Uh, not just planners and architects, but real world developers, guys who do the financing, right? Guys who understand municipal law. And they'll bring whoever to the table, construct a team based on what your particular needs are, what the, the sort of what you're looking to get done in the process. Now, I'm not, I didn't, I'm not suggesting necessarily a ULI is the way to go. I brought up ULI as a, and discussed it uh, with Bob, and then we had a conversation with Chris. And uh, I called this guy Tom Eitler, who kind of worked with years ago. And I did it just to, not to say ULI is the right thing to do, or that a charrette's the wrong thing to do, but to create an opening for a conversation about it. And I think that somewhere in between is maybe the right answer. And so it's, it's instead of like, you know, picking up a hammer so you go looking for a nail, right? You know, I thought that was what was really sad about the whole form-based code effort was that somebody walked into a room and said the magic words, form-based code. And then before you knew it, the town board was being led to a swimming pool and ended up in the deep end. And there were no lifeguards. And it was taking a, a process and our concerns and vision or whatever we wanted to achieve in town was being seen within the lens of a form-based code solution rather than coming up with a process that really addresses the problems or the concerns or the vision or whatever you want to call it. So I think it's a moment to actually talk about not ULI versus charrette or, or maybe it's a combination of two. Maybe there are sequences of these things can happen together. But I think we ought to talk about where you really need to go. And I think where you really need to go, if you're going to do anything, first thing, this is not, as I, as I said to Chris, this is not an existential problem. The town is not dying. No. Right? The town is actually great. So it's, it's really more people, what people want more out of the town rather than what they don't have. Right? So uh, in a big way, in an existential way. So it just... It seems to be that the best way to get that information is to actually approach as many people as you can. You need to be focused at the referendum. If there is going to be one, you're going to have to have, I think, a referendum if you're going to spend money to do this kind of thing in a big way. I don't know. Maybe you don't need a referendum, but I think you might want to go through one if you're going to have to, I don't know, spend, like, for instance, $10 million to build a community center. I don't know what it's going to be. But you're need, you're need, I think you're going to need to, if, if not technically do it, politically go before the people and say, this is what you told us, mm -hmm. right? And so you need a process to, that's what we're talking about, you need a process to listen to what they want to tell you. Mm -hmm. And I don't, my personally, I don't know, how many households are there? 5,000, 6,000? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there are like 10,000 taxpayers. I mean, just assuming every household has two adults. How many of those taxpayers do you think you're going to get to attend and even know about a charrette and really participate in a way that's going to be meaningful to them? Mm -hmm. I don't think many. I don't think enough for you to go to a referendum and say, oh, this is what you told us. No, I think you'd have to do charrettes and outreach sessions and surveys. Like, There's a lot. You have to do every way you can fine to get to people is what you right, need to do. Right, I agree. And I think before you spend, from my perspective, before you spend $150,000, $125,000, whatever it is, to actually do a charrette, mm -hmm. the, the formal way in which That's it's made. That's what is charging, too. Yes, I know. I understand. Yeah. I, I'm not promoting ULI necessarily. Yeah, no, 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 no. I know these things cost money. I'm suggesting that, I mean, this is not my business, but do a, a real survey. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, you know, Flood the mailboxes, yeah. you know, send things home with kids at school. Use every social media thing and every piece of paper you can plant in stores and actually get get the issues out there, get the the initiative out there and ask people. And you got to ask them the right way, right? You got to ask them. I think you ask, you, you, you ask them, what would you do? You know, what, what would you like to have here, obviously? But as Bob says, I think you need to be sure that there is a sense of reality to it. 
And I think the point he made is an excellent one, which is that there isn't a piece of land down here that isn't spoken for, mm -hmm. right? And for example, if you decide that you are going to take surface parking and not lose any parking, you're going to have to build a garage mm -hmm. in deck. Numbers I'm familiar with, which could be inaccurate <coughs> or anywhere for an acre of parking, that's going to be a parking deck, that's going to be between three and a half, four billion dollars, right? So the value of the land here, the way of land economics works, the value of the land here is three and a half, four million dollars, right? If you're going to free it up, if you want to get other utility out of it, that's what it's going to cost you to do it. If you look at the ball field, the ball field is two and a half acres. So if you do the math on that, the ball field is actually $10 million worth of land. Now that's real quick economics, and you know, by the time you do that calculation, you may come up with, well, does it how you, you really value it that way? But actually you do. The, the opportunity cost of that ball field there is $10 million by, that, by the factoring the cost of freeing up land to do the parking. So I don't know to what extent you chase down those numbers, but I think those are the issues you need to put before the people when you say, what would you like to have here? You need to say, by the way, in order to do this, we're going to have to find some land. And here are the land options. And there are only two, really, that I know of that I'm familiar We're not going to tear this building down, I don't think. Uh, would be, you know, the, a parking lot, a part of the parking lot, or part of the ball field, or the whole ball field. So I think that needs to be put in place because you don't want to come to the end of this process and say, okay, this is what we heard, this is what we're going to do. Oh, by the way, it's going to cost you $10 million or you're going to lose the ball field. I think that needs to be put into the conversation for these people. And the other problem with, I think, with the, the previous initiative was people, a lot of effort went into like, making this picture of what the downtown of the Hamlet was going to be. And people looked at this picture, and they didn't see themselves in it, right? They, they not only did they not see themselves in it, they saw what they had lost. And, of course, people rejected it. I, I can totally understand that. It's only rational, right? So... I think what you need to do is you need to paint a picture that they can see themselves in. They look at it, they see themselves, they see their wives, they see their family, their children, you know, their nannies with their kids, taking them down to meet other nannies at the park, you know, whatever it might be. Their, their parents, uh, old guy like me, you know, I can go down there and, and have something to do down there. I think you need to be sure that you're painting that picture. And if you ask them, they'll tell you what's in that picture. And I think you need to, to have a process that gets that information from them and then finds a way to transfer it, to, to, to morph it into a rational uh, uh, a vision which is sort of believable with respect to what can be built, uh, when it could be built, the sequence of how it might be built, end up with a package with some drawings now, perhaps, that you take to a referendum and say, this is it. This is what we heard. And so my argument would be somewhere in that process there might be a formal charrette or there might be ULI coming in to say, okay, this is how we can make it real for you. I don't know. Talk to them about that. But I think fundamentally it should be a, a real earnest connection with everybody in town to the extent you can do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, as a starting I, point. Yeah, I mean, I, I, look, I couldn't agree more with every single thing you just said. Um, and I think that was the biggest problem last year. I think we didn't have a vision and we didn't have buy-in to the extent that I think for something like this we should have. Um, and however we get there, that's on us, right? Or whatever town board is in office. It's a responsibility to make sure that you have that buy-in. But I think getting to that vision is the key, right? And I firmly believe everything you said about our town. I think it's the opposite of broken. I think it's it's great. And I think there are incremental things we can do to make it better. And that's what my goal is, 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 to, is to push for incremental change um, and to find out what those areas are. But I guess the, the key part and the thing that I thought about ULI that sounded interesting 
is that it helps us understand what's possible. Um, and I think that that's also critical, right? Because, I mean, if we just went and said, hey, everybody give us a wish list, we know what's going to happen, right? There's going to be a swimming pool on the rec field or an ice skating rink or something like that. And, and, and who knows, maybe that is possible. But until we have a sense, um, you know, we could get a wish list as opposed to like a to-do list. Um, so I agree with you 100%. Um, I think create, trying to come up with a vision, um, but at least for me anyway, the town is the opposite of broken. Um, so that's my take. I, I agree on all the points um, that everyone stated. And I think, you know, having gone through the process that we did with PACE a number of years ago um, when we were working on the comprehensive plan, I was new to town and had participated in the Shrep process quite a bit professionally. And I was surprised because, as I mentioned to a few people at that time, it really did lack, uh, you know, a, a cohesive vision. And so it became this sort of wish list that didn't feel um, uh, connected to what was actually achievable um, in the downtown. And I agree, you know, it's interesting looking at firms like Torty Gallus that worked on the form-based code, amazing firms that, uh, you know, I've worked with um, in my professional career, and I know the caliber of the work that they do. And I kept looking at it thinking there's a disconnect here because somehow or another they've been guided to, uh, you know, deliver something that's not in tune with what the residents truly want, and that lack of connection um, was, was pretty obvious. Um, I think we have a significant opportunity here to, you know, maybe sort of, charrettes can take different forms, as you know, right? And so most of my experience has been in, um, you know, in the development space where everybody sort of knows what the parameters are. And, you know, you're, you're moving in a direction that isn't this sort of random wish list of, oh, a dog park here and, you know, uh, multifamily housing there type of thing, right? It's connected to reality. Um, and so uh, ULI could be interesting in that way. But the thing that I would say, and, and I say this with sort of, you know, I've been a part of ULI for over 20 years. I, you know, I served two years on the um, executive committee for ULI New York. So I'm very familiar, but... But I would say they tend to veer more into the planning space. Um, and so I think we need somebody who is really adept at public engagement. And it's that sort of marriage of the two that's going to make this a successful um, endeavor because we need to have those parameters but then be able to connect with the residents successfully. And so ULI can be adept in actually sourcing those individuals because, as you say, they have a, they have a significant uh, membership. Right. to pull from. But, you know, I think that you know, the, the step would be to put out an RFP that, that outlines the criteria that we're looking for and then see what a ULI would come back with. Yeah, I don't want to, yes. And uh, even though I, I did five advisory panels over the years, the last one was downtown Los Angeles, this is like 10 years ago. Uh, I'm pretty familiar with how it works, but I don't want to sit here and speak for them. Uh, Tom Eitler is the guy to talk to about all these things and to be, I think it'd be helpful to that conversation for us to have an idea about what we want from ULI and to be able to uh, elicit from him whether he thinks they can deliver that for us. Because the way it works in my memory is that these guys come into town and you talk to them and you tell them what, you know, you tell them what you want, you tell them what the problem is mm -hmm. and they meet with like a hundred people in town individually and then you see them a week later and they tell you, you know, what they came up with and there may be some discomfort in that if you don't, you know, they're going to be doing their gymnastics and land, you know, stick a landing on the mat when you actually want them to land on your balance beam. Right. And they, you can't necessarily rely on them getting exactly what you might be looking for. Again, that's a note of caution because it may not work here. It works exceedingly well in other places. It worked great in LA and the other places that I that I participated, but maybe it does work here. So, I was gonna say, sorry, go ahead, just, go ahead. I think Sleepy Hollow actually did. Oh, did uh, I thought they did back, this was when I was actually on that committee. I think that they had an advisory panel for Sleepy Hollow. So that's something that maybe you yeah, want to check into. I can into. look into that. I think, I think so my concern just mm -hmm. was a little bit just to reiterate what Tom said. I, I, my concern is that, so ULI and I, I spoke with Tom, mm -hmm. as you know, and, uh, you know, they interview 100 people. That is not a very big cross-section of, of people in town. And I, my concern is I don't want somebody coming to us and saying, this is what you should have. Mm -hmm. I, I, I sort of feel like... 
and I always thought things need to be feasible. I, I don't, you know, somebody could say I want an amusement park in the middle of the town, and that's great, but this is what you what you need to give up to get that amusement park. So to me, there's there are two pieces to say what do you want and then what is actually feasible. So you could have 10 people saying that amusement park, but say, well, no, I don't want to give up every single piece of property in the downtown and put up giant parking garages and I mean, Jeremy does want to slide, but you know, um, well, you know, that's temporary. Pe <laughs> I know, but people may, you know, you know, but I'd like to still hear what the ideas are because while I may say, you know what, I want to build a great community center in this back lot and put up a parking garage behind it, and I think that's a great idea. Other people may have another idea that I didn't think of, so I'd love to first get those ideas and then exactly. find out what's the feasibility analysis related to, let's say, the top right. five ideas. Right. You know? I, 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 I completely agree. And that's sort of directing them to do what's going to be useful if you decide to engage them, to do what's useful to you. And and what is could be useful to you is not, well, you need to do a... Uh, you need to do a amusement park. Uh, that's not going to be useful to you. But if you decide to do a amusement park, what could be useful to you is they will help you figure out how to do it. Correct. Right. The financing of it, right? Where to go for public funds for it? You know, if there's mm -hmm. some land use concerns that may uh, legal concerns. I mean, depends on who they assemble in order to deal with your problem. Mm -hmm. So. As I said, somewhere in the process, they may be useful for those purposes rather than the visioning purposes, mm -hmm. right? The direct public engagement is the visioning part of it, I think. And mm -hmm. for me, uh, that starts with this sort of broad survey. And there, uh, there's sort of a, I think there's a way to, to get control of it because you're right. Somebody's going to say, well, uh, you know, you get... Let's say you get 30% of the responses say, we have to have a community center. I want a community center. Now, I don't know if you guys are ready to take on building a community center. I mean, that's a whole thing, right? But you're going to get 30% of the, of the responses say, well, I want something. It'll be something on the scale of like a skating rink, which maybe is possible and feasible. And so... There, I think there's a way to take all these responses and find a way to order them mm -hmm. and do not commit to do everything, right? Mm -hmm. Take it in pieces and say, well, there are short-term things we can do, there are mid-term things we can do, and there are long-term things we can do. And we're going to come up with a plan that in the end, maybe we have all of it. But every piece of it that we do as we go along is going to contribute to the end, but if, if the next town board decides that, you know, or the town decides that they don't want to do the next piece, we really haven't lost anything if each piece can stand on its own. Mm -hmm. And so I wouldn't be, I guess I wouldn't be too worried about the range of responses you're going to get, things that may seem like they're today infeasible. I imagine you're going to get a range that you're going to be able to manage and put together a rational, mm -hmm. uh, longer-term plan that everybody can, you know, perhaps most people can get by. Yeah, let's do that now. Yeah. See, our I, I think our comprehensive plan was, with that outreach, I agree with you, Tara, <clears throat> that was done on a uh, very aspirational basis. You know, it was very broad-based and we got ideas thrown on the board, et cetera. It's now time to drill down. And uh, I like this idea of really getting out there and, and making every effort to get to all the households. And I would also suggest that you don't frame the questions, and maybe you get help from someone on this, but, you know, I don't think it's sufficient to say we would like a community center. I think it's more important to say, what would you like to see in the community center? Would you like to see a community center with a performing arts center? Would you like to see a pool? Would you like to see an uh, uh, exercise area? Whatever it might be. What is it that we want to see in that community center? I think just doing it broadly, what does that mean? And then again, uh, you know, the, the, the maybe some indication of what the cost might be. 
But uh, and maybe you have to do it two times, two times, three times to get you know you drill down to get more information. You get information thirty percent say community center. Okay, what kind? What do you want to see in there? What is it that is going to make this the town really the hamlet really click? And um, I wouldn't be afraid of of spending. I think that's relatively inexpensive money to spend to get that information uh, from uh, from hamlet dwellers and, and uh, town residents. So, you know, I, I'd like to say that, you know, at the risk of being repetitive, I completely, 100% agree with the broad themes we've discussed, discussed, the vision that has to come first, you know, bound by the guardrails of feasibility. Uh, but when we talk about a vision, I think what's important is the inclusive, inclusivity of that vision. Yes. And just to add to what's already been said, I would say that we have to do it in a way where the community feels respected. That was one of the things that was missing in the process, you know, uh, in addition to everything else that we've already discussed, that the way that we go out to communicate with people will be really important. So if we have sessions, we should have multiple sessions, for instance, some in the morning, some in the evenings. We really have to structure things in a way where people feel that they were accommodated in a reasonable fashion. Um, if we have a survey, it should be devised by some experts in, in surveys and we would have to think very deeply about how in-depth the questions go and how detailed they go to perhaps not just get to what people want to see, but why they want to see it, which could lead to other solutions that are more feasible. Um, so I think it, it has to be a careful process that can't be too fast. Um, you know, and everyone's already said all the all the other feel, factors I that think, I, I agree think, with. Yeah, sorry, flash point yeah. on that. I don't think, for, I speak for myself, I don't think I ever want to look back in five or ten years and say we did something dramatic when we don't have an existential problem and we didn't have very significant buy-in from the community. Right, right. and, so and that's your, why I mentioned the point, process needs really to be slow be and thought, as much about thoughtful. The process. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Thorough, very thorough. Mm -hmm. can, can I? Can I Hold it. From the yes. board. Uh, so it, it's a little hard to see kind of who's saying what, but but uh, a little bit ago, I think it was Tara, um, made the point that there's a, a difference between a planning process and a public engagement, or, or I don't know if it was, it was maybe Lisa, I, I, it's, it's impossible to see who's, who's, who it is, but I think that's a really, really, really good point um, and really worth exploring, right? Um, and ultimately, I think we need to at least define um, sort of the, the problem, obviously problem in quotes, uh, I, I think the point that like, the town is not broken is a good one. I think we can all agree that it's not. This is not an existential crisis for the town of Newcastle, right? But but um, but the, what, what is the problem that we're trying to solve here? And that can kind of help us help shape this discussion, you know, as it progresses, um, a little bit, right? What, what what are we trying to get at ultimately? And then, additionally, um, a couple uh, references were made to, to to the comprehensive plan process that that happened a few years ago. And um, I think we need to think about what, you know, what was good about that process, what was bad about that process, what did that process reveal, and try to build off of that as much as possible, right? We want to have credibility with, with the residents of the town. Um, and, you know, some participated in that process, many, many, many did not. And it, how do we build off of the successes and failures of, of, of that process in order to get towards um, answering, you know, again, trying to solve whatever the problem is that we're trying to solve, trying to define what that is, I think, I think is important. Eldad, I completely agree. I mean, that's something that I think we've talked about um, in terms of picking up where the comprehensive plan left off and reintroducing that, frankly, because I bet anything, if you pull the number of residents here, there's a lack of recognition about what our comprehensive plan really uh, is about and and really, you know, the, um, the, the sort of broad brush roadmap that it provides for us as we look at this. Um, but I think you can take that and then push it into a public engagement process. Um, and there's planning entities that specialize in the public engagement aspect. But then very quickly, I love the idea of ULI with the multifaceted piece because that can actually provide a significant cost savings when you look at their ability to actually put together a multidisciplinary team versus having to go to a firm and then hoping they have the right, you know, areas of expertise, they can cherry pick and, and they do that, as you know, yeah. right? Um, yeah. 
<laughs> so but they're not so much for the for the public yeah. engagement. Yeah. It's, it would be yeah. public engagement and then let's say ULI yes. doing the same. larger piece. Your yeah, synthesis of it. Yeah. Sort of execution phase of yes. it. Would right. Be exactly. one way to put it. Yes. So if I just been listening, I have some comments, general and, and more specific. But uh, you know, I, I agree with a lot of what everyone has said. There's also being a disagree with it. One of my concerns that was before is that. Jeremy, can you talk a little louder? Yeah, can, I'm looking up. Uh, one of the concerns that I have with is that are we seeing a, a post-COVID pop, and we have that sale of I'm trying to blank. What was the bank that sold the property? Uh, the local was in, whoever the bank was that owned it, but they weren't actively leasing the property until it was sold and to an owner who decided to lease the property. Um, and, you know, I know a town, this town board thinks affordable housing is important and legislation was passed to that end. My concern is that we're never going to realize that affordable housing. We're not going to realize workforce housing. We're not going to realize uh, sort of a vibrancy of market rate housing um, with certainly our current zoning. And even with tweaking some of our zoning, other than maybe with the biggest property owners who have the most money to spend, the largest lots, and can afford to, to make those changes. Um, and there's a reason why that there hasn't been development um, in our community, and we need to figure out a way not just to say we're in a good place now and we're vibrant <coughs> now, but the longevity and long-term <coughs> success and being a competitive, not just Hamlet, but town, where people want to come and people want to invest. And I, my concern if we're going to sort of meet the, the goals of not just the master plan, but what a lot of people voice since that time, even if it's not an existential crisis, it's identifying how this is going to happen long term. And I'll just go back to workforce affordable, uh, various types of market rate housing. And, uh, you know, we look at the village, the village, the village yard, we look at Susan Lawrence, we look at White Aid across from the parking lot, pardon me, across from the post office. And my fear is that we're going to have these kind of one-offs come in to make their changes because they can, and who's going to be lost in the shuffle? If we're just going to tweak, you're going to lose the ability of those little point one one acre lots and those three-story buildings or two-story buildings to really have any value in their property. And to give them that value, that'll incentivize them to do something more, whether it's refurbishing and updating, whether it's expanding those properties. And before you even get to any of that conversation about a charrette, even though it's part of the shred process, the first question in my mind is, is this community well, willing to accept that if we're going to have any significant development, even if it's, for example, the White Aid lot, which is before us, that'll never happen in its, our current zoning because the parking will allow for it. So either the town board is going to have to drastically change that parking or allow for use of our public spaces. So I think the first and foremost question is, without identifying necessarily what people would like to see and the feasibility of, of that, it's, well, let's identify, are you okay and willing to accept the possibility solely of public spaces being used in a different way than they are now, which may include parking structures and may include some sort of private partnership. Because if ultimately we do all of this and there's a referendum and the people say, we don't want you to use that parking lot or something else, we don't want a parking structure, all this is for naught. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's a much easier lift, at least dollar-wise, to first address that issue before going into the entire Charette process and saying, whatever you envision, within reason it doesn't matter. What doesn't say it's going to happen. Do you understand that there's a very real likelihood that it's going to take parking structures, it's going to take uh, reuse of our, our public property? And my fear is we're going to spend money and we can say we wasted money on the form-based code and everything else before that. And I know, and tell me if I'm wrong, the two of you believe that at least the FGIS had value subsequent. There was something of value there. Um, but even that's not necessarily in the same place it was before. So I don't want to find us spending money on even, although this seems like a, I do actually support what you've suggested in, in theory, but spending six figures and multiples of six figures if we don't have that initial buy-in which that investment needs to be made before somehow, before we even take that next step of, of the charrette process, um, because I'm fearful we're going to end up in the same place ultimately, which is we're going to spend a lot of money, and this is obviously going to go beyond our town board. It's going to go for an extended period of time, but we're going to spend a lot of money, and we're going to have another great thing to stick on the shelf 
nobody wants that. None of us here want that, and, and I get it. Um, so th that's my concern, whether you call it incremental change or ex as existential. The benefit will be to the big property owners, not the little property owners. We won't be able to realize the affordable workforce and, and diverse type of market rate housing unless we plan for the bigger picture and not we're doing okay now. So, But it sounds like you're advocating for the form-based code again. No, no, I'm absolutely not. It's, it's dead. 100% is dead. Well, well I, is they dead. call it something else. No, but that's no, exactly you're putting, what word, it sounds you're putting like. words in my mouth, which is absolutely not the case. Right. I am saying that we need to be able to identify how we're going to make real change and uh, change that, that is, uh, can follow and live with the hamlet as it grows. And my fear is that this process will certainly help the largest landowners who can use their properties to accommodate parking, but to assist the other landowners to really modify and update and build out their properties and to realize the things that this town board has said, such as the affordable housing, it's going to really require a change in our parking, whether that's parking allotments, whether that's parking structures, and whether it's Otherwise, none of this happens. So but that's what we're that, talking so, about. Right. Yeah. So, but, but, but in a different way. But we're talking feasibility as a general concept and what so, people would like. I'm talking solely, strictly, an easier lift as to parking. Jeremy, if I could, because um, I'd like to uh, go back to what I think was your predicate, which was if we are going to stimulate development. And I think that that's a threshold question. It depends on how you define development, but I thought the consequences of this exercise that you all have just been through was that people don't want development. And if if there is a, they they actually probably well, people like- People don't it. want significant development. Okay. Not none. All right. Um, right people certainly want to see growth in you know, so, vacant so, properties. Well, okay. Yeah, they don't want to see vacant properties. But how you define development, you know, is, well, is another thing. Sorry. Let me I'm sorry, let me just finish. So um, if I can understand the form base, I'm sorry, form base, the affordable housing um, um, desire to do something about that. And if, if the town board wants to drive that policy through this process that we're talking about, then do it. Right? There's no problem with that, I, as far as I know. I mean, it's not for me to say, but there is a, it's a vehicle to do that and see what comes out at the other end. Just stipulate that, that this is one of the things we'd like to see. How would you like to see it if we do it, for example? Mm -hmm. And you know, to deal with the parking, so on, and you know, all of those things in the process of sorting that out. And maybe somebody like you or I or somebody else can tell you how to finance all of that and make it work. You know, use a conservation land trust and turn the, the affordable housing over to them and let them run it for you. You guys be equity partners. I, I don't know. I mean, there are lots of ways that these things can be sure. looked at. So, I mean, I think that's that's exactly the point. Um, we're all sort of advocating, I think, for the same thing. But, you know, we're, you'd never look at parking in isolation, right? Because these challenges are multifaceted by their very nature. And so... You know, that's why you have firms that bring the design, build, finance, operate expertise to the table as you uh, embark on a project like this, right? Because you have to actually develop a vision that is um, that is feasible and works on a number of fronts. You know, everything from, uh, you know, the, the impact on infrastructure to um, the financial aspects, right? And then how you look at private development versus public. Um, I think, you know we have an opportunity here to create that broader vision that's going to drive, you know, as, as Tom was saying, the process is actually built to achieve our, you know, our, uh, you know, criteria for success, affordable housing, workforce housing, you know, whatever it might be. If we wanted more retail, that's, that will come out of this envisioning process. But, you know, planners by their very nature understand that uh, town centers are dynamic. It's not meant, you know, to, to be a stagnant thing. And so as we look around the communities all around us, you can tell, you know, that at times they haven't embarked on this process, right? Because that's when you see the sort of haphazard development, but we have an opportunity to be really cohesive about it and to guide private private landowners to, you know, um, an ultimate vision that we want to achieve for the town. Certainly, so that's and, that, and, and I don't doubt what you're saying this is your, your wheelhouse far more than it's my wheelhouse. When I'm saying the, the parking, what I mean by that is not the, the, the plan that a developer would come in and, and explain as you just did and see how it all works together. As a fundamental question, there are people in this community, no matter what you say, well, you, any of us in this person, 
what you say are going to are going to respond. I don't want to, you know, I want my big parking lot so I can walk from wherever. I wa I will never support a parking structure, and I think we need to just gauge that initial question, regardless of what we're going to come. Yeah, this is what we may be able to build, and you have the feasibility of it, but as an th initial threshold question, um, and my other fear is again just that this will benefit potentially the big property owners, but I, I'm hopeful if that's the right term that. Those little property owners, if we're not going to ultimately say you can go up, this all this is just going to be for the largest landowners. No, I, I, no, I, I think there's some true. there's some informal talk going around even now, where smaller property owners, uh, with some changes in some of the rules and regulations, could better use say the rear part of their their property in town. And in some cases, it's a barn back there; it's not being used. In some cases, admittedly, the parking requirements are overly strict. We have way too many spaces required for what they have. And I think uh, I think Chuck Napoli's looked at this informally, and I think he's identified anywhere from 50 to 60 parcels in the Hamlet that could extend this kind of uh, apartment living to a, a rear structure. It doesn't have to be an existing one, but a rear one. But if the town board were so interested, uh, it could make a change in the zoning to that extent. And again, talk about incremental. That would be very incremental because it'll take time to build it out. But I think that would be absolutely ripe for workforce housing, affordable housing, senior housing, whatever it might be. But I think there's some opportunities there without, again, you know, I, I, I don't disagree with you. The large property owners always seem to come out on their feet. Um, but um, I, I think there's some opportunities in here also that we have infill opportunities that are, are very significant. Yeah, so to, to, that, to that end, um, I've spoken to Sabrina and Tom DePole about that. And, you know, we've looked throughout town. I mean, there are places like the parking area behind Talbot's and other places on King Street where, you know, parking was designed... 30 years ago for a completely different environment, and there are spaces that are just completely underutilized. So what we did with below street level, which was you know hopefully gonna gain anywhere from six to 10 units in town, I think something like this, and it, it remains to be seen, but it's a conversation, you know, could could result in you know many, many units there as well. I guess you know the one response I would have to you, Jeremy, is is when you say your concern is that this will benefit the larger property owners, like you're begging a huge question which is that this is defined. And I don't think anyone here is saying that the this is defined. I think we're saying we need to explore what's possible. But to me, anyway, with a governor that I don't want to fix what's not broken, right? I want to improve on it. And, you know, so I just wouldn't beg that question, that there's an assumption that this means something. But also, That's you know, true. Jeremy, I would reassure you, because if you think about the form-based code, I think that would have obliterated the small property owners. So... This is an opportunity, this process rather, because there is no this yet, but the process we're about to engage in is much more deliberate and thoughtful. And we would have the opportunity to, to ensure that there is, you know, if I could use the word equity, you know, among what happens to the, the property owners and the different kinds of um, so, businesses I mean, I, I, that I, 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 I have in town. I don't know how the... Yeah. The performance code is dead, so it's not about the performance code, although I don't know how that would... Well, that, that was, I, I raised that because stores. that was the we only other option that we had. So, so. So, 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 you know, my fear again, it, however it's defined, no doubt, as you just said, Bob, was going to benefit the largest landowners. And we are going to see them, regardless, as this process goes on, they're going to come looking to make changes, as Rite Aid is doing now. So by the time we get done with this process, too, I wouldn't be shocked if another large landowner came and, and we're in the midst of this and you know we're we going to issue another uh, moratorium what are we going to do to disallow that from happening as we're planning our zoning i, I don't know what the, what the plan is but that, that that's that, listen my, my concern is my concern we're all, yes we are on the same page and this is the formula code is dead it's, 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 my, well, my the formula code is dead again I, I don't think what we're looking at here is full-scale rezoning again of the of the hamlet, but it's something, you know, again, like to Chris's point, we don't know what this is yet, and that's part of what the public engagement is about. But to your point, I do think we need to look at parking requirements again, because I think that in a post-COVID world, parking has changed, commuting habits have changed, and then as we get more environmental, you know, people are cutting down on cars, they're shared services. So it is something we need to look at because maybe we're never going to go back to having a parking lot that's 100% full. Um, but maybe we will, and I think that's something that is probably a little premature to tell right now. 
but it's something that we need to keep in mind because maybe our parking does need to be adjusted based on this new world. So um, it's, it, uh, the, forgive me, the, the discussion is sort of moving in a direction which is fascinating to me. Um, uh, discussions about, you know, now we have all this excess parking. I'm sorry, I just don't believe that yet. Right? No, I don't either. And so uh, I, for one, if I was a town board member, I wouldn't want to hamstring the future town board by, you know, taking away parking. And then it turns out that you don't have enough because there's a there's a big, fat goose down the rail line and it's laying golden eggs. And people are going down and bringing those golden eggs home to their nest here. And that's what's fueling this community, right, is external employment. And it's access to external employment, which makes possible everything here. So just on that subject, I'd be very, very careful about preserving your infrastructure capacity before you're absolutely certain you can give it up for the benefit of something else. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm saying the parking, you know, for now, you ought to value the surface parking at the cost of replacing it with a, with a parking garage, because don't give that away yet. It's just too premature to do that. Uh, on the subject of the, I think, on the subject of the, uh, the comprehensive plan, the great gift of it, it's so general. I mean, it's like mm -hmm. apple pie and, you know, you know it's, you, who doesn't love, right, the comprehensive plan? But that's, that's its gift. You can find what you want to find in it, and you can find some really good things in it to use as a touchstone for the initiative that you may want to go through. I, I thought that the conversation was focused on town-owned land not North King, all right, or North Greeley or, you know, any other land. I thought that that was the point, but it doesn't mean that it can't go there, but I thought that was where we were focused this, in this yes. uh, particular discussion. Yes, it is. And in that discussion, it's public land. And so what I would, I'd go, there are three, if, if you were to say, okay, what is our broad objective here for the people of Newcastle, right? That's how do we, you know, give us just a concise statement about it. Uh, forgive me for this, but I go. I'm an architect. I go back to Vitruvius, who said, "What makes good architecture is commodity, utility, and delight." Right? Commodity in this case is we're going to do something for everybody in town. Old guys like me, you know, uh, teenagers and go to whoever. Everybody has a place to go here, and we're going to make that place. We're going to have utility here. In other words, there's going to be a reason to go. Right? You're going to want to go there because you're going to be doing something which you, know, you want to do. And once you're there, you're going to be, it's a civic space, so you're going to be among all these other people, which is great for the town. You're going to be delighted that you're there because it's, you look around, it's just a delightful place. If that was sort of, if, if there was one way to put it out there to the town, the people of town, and say, you know, we can really... We could do something great here. Now, it's not going to be all of that the first day. It might not be all of that the first five years, mm -hmm. but we're going to start building pieces of it over time. Mm -hmm. Whether it includes affordable housing, I don't know. Whether it includes a skating rink, you know, at this point, it doesn't matter. You find out that process. You find out what those answers are, the utility of it, right? You find that out by, by doing the surveys and getting out and talking to people. But it's a, I think it's... For me, because, you know, I did this stuff for a living, I just find it very exciting. I mean, it's something it to really be happy about, smile about, be energized by, I think. I agree. Agreed. So, um, so I think ahead. let's let this be the last comment. I know we're over. We had that. We had technical difficulties, everyone who came. That's why we're a little delayed. But I think it's almost 830. So, um, Eldad, you want to make the last comment of the night? It's sure, a, a lot of pressure. pressure. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> You're up. Um, and, you know, Tom always uh, gets the coding Vitruvius before I do. Because um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that happens regularly. I actually wow. knew the guy. The yeah, yeah, you, you guys practiced our, uh, architecture together. I know, I know. Um, but, um, you know, the, the, the conversation is, is super interesting. <laughs> The conversation is super interesting. I, I, I couldn't agree more with Tom about just like, this is exciting. I think the last uh, joint session we had, we said something similar, like these are great problems to have. Like we have a lot of super resources. The town, the fact that the town owns a bunch of land is exciting. The fact that people want to be here and there's demand for, for our town 
um, is great. Uh, figuring out what to do with all of it is, 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 is the challenge before all of us. Um, I think some of Jeremy's points are, are, are good ones, um, but it kind of gets a little bit back to the question that I had, which is what is the problem we're trying to solve? Um, and I, I, truthfully, I think if we went around the table, we don't have time for that today, but if we went around the table trying to say, what is the problem we're trying to solve? I think we get maybe nine different answers. Um, so that's a challenge too. And there is no necessarily right and wrong here, right? There, there are different opinions. That there, are, there, there are points of view. And I think we have to be honest that there has to be some direction, some decision as to what is the problem we're trying to solve and then push in that direction and then solicit um, you know, the, the feedback um, through whatever processes we think are, is appropriate. Um, I, I, so in the interest of time, I guess the question is sort of what's next? So I think next is this was, I thought, a very helpful and insightful conversation today. So I think next we're going to think about how we would want to um, embrace public engagement and answer what that question is going to be. We'd have to kind of design what do, how do we want to engage the public and what are we asking them? Um, and then I think once we get that process done, move to like a ULI and somebody who can really look at the feasibility of what came out of that engagement process in terms of, of cost and location and then get to kind of a, a planning phase to do that with significant public engagement. <clears throat> You may want to actually solicit folks uh, in the in the town, and actually try to drill down on the vision and try to get some alternative visions out there, mm -hmm. and yep. have them respond to those rather than structures and, and utility at this point. So, what is it that you you know, what what mm -hmm. is the utility you want? What's the there that you want to be, have down there? That kind of stuff, and that might be a, a way to start it yep. uh, and really start to because it it gets to be very difficult. It puts a lot of pressure on you guys. Puts a lot of pressure on you yeah. know the, the the hundred people of ULI. This way, if you get a broader brush mm -hmm. of people and, and throw out some options, here are some visions that we have. I think that uh, that's to Hildan's point. I think I, I which think is so what, what are we trying to solve? Right. Yeah. And um, it's it's again it, it's not. I don't think there's a problem necessarily to solve uh, Eldad as much as there's an opportunity yeah. to be met. Yeah. That's what I'm and, right. Right. and people are yes. saying, geez, you know, there's no there there downtown. Now, we don't have to transform the town. We don't have to do this, but maybe they, it sounds like they want to do this. And that's an opportunity to, for us to, not a problem to be, but an opportunity to yeah. fill that, that, that desire to make more out of their town. Yeah. Exactly. I, I think, yeah, I think. I agree. That what we need is to be looking for opportunities in addition to fixing any little problems or modest problems that we stumble over in the whole effort. Agreed. I, I just right. want to say one more thing, and I think this would answer perhaps Eldad's uh, question, is it might behoove us as a board to come up with our reason, our collective reason for doing this. Right, we and, are. And, you know, not I don't mean the visioning sessions with the community, no. but this board. As to why we why we are doing this, which is what Eldad right. is asking. Because we can't get to the visioning sessions until right. we know what we're what, your what opportunity and what our objective what our is objective. and what we're trying right. to accomplish. Right. Right. But I, I just my my only last point is I don't want to concede because I don't agree that this is an exercise in finding a solution to a problem. So Eldad's Agreed. point: no What problem. problem are we trying to solve? I don't frame it that way. I don't think we're trying to solve a problem. And so the exercise last year to me was a solution looking for a problem that didn't exist. I just don't want to concede that that's the exercise here. Right. Problem right. doesn't. Tom really said it well good. that it's what opportunities can exactly. we yep. can we right. yep. you know take advantage. The art of the possible. Right. Oh, well, exactly. Perfect. All right. And so with that smile, being said, be I want to thank the planning board uh, for coming today to uh, to this meeting. I think it was very very helpful. And thank you, Sabrina. Um, so we'll, we'll certainly be in touch about next steps. And I think it's exciting, the opportunities that we have to, uh, to don't really mind, enhance the town. If you don't mind, uh, if it's OK, we can do a parallel thing just amongst ourselves, also in terms of objectives, and just to get some feedback and throw it off to you, to you guys as well. Sure. That would be helpful. That would be great. You can okay. throw it away or look yes. at it or whatever. As long Sounds as you great. write that letter, I'm OK with you. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I think that's all we have for our work session. So can I just, before they go, can I just get a motion to adjourn our work session? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Take care. All right. Thank you, guys. We're going to take a, a five-minute break before we start the, the town board meeting. We just we're have to we need, yeah, we're going to go back up there. And okay. Yes. Okay. So five-minute break. Thank you, everybody. September 20th. We've had a, a little bit of frenetic start today. Can I have a motion to reopen the town board meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So for those of you watching online, and obviously for those of you here in person, we did have some technical difficulties earlier, so we are working our way through that. That's why we were both delayed and why the live Zoom feed is not working, but hopefully you're seeing us at some point. Um, anyway, I wanted to open the town board meeting. Do we have any announcements? Um, just real quick, uh, school taxes um, are due, everybody's favorite topic. 2022-2023 uh, school tax bills have been mailed. If you, as opposed to your bank, are responsible to pay property taxes and you haven't received a tax bill, please contact the tax office, 914-238-4773. Um, and just a shout out to everyone who contributed their time and energies to make Community Day such a tremendous success. It was a great day. Um, to spend outside with our Newcastle neighbors. It, it was just a wonderful event. So thanks, everybody, especially staff that showed up in the office. Yes. yes. You guys did an amazing so job. So you preempted what I was going to say in my supervisor. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I was going to thank everyone, both from the town and, and Rotary, who worked so hard to make Community Day incredible, as well as all the vendors who spent uh, all their time on Saturday really getting to meet members of our community. It was a wonderful, wonderful day. So I want to thank everyone, both who attended and, and who made the day possible. So thank you. Um, all right. In term, I'm going to skip everything else. Uh, I did want to wish some happy birthdays, though, in Community Corner. Um, some of these were already um, in the newsletter. Those are happy birthday to Carissa Pilati. Happy 11th birthday to Brandon Kester. And from your wife, happy 14th anniversary to Rockin' Dave G. Um, not my words. Uh, then also we'd like to wish a happy 4th birthday to Amelia Cassia. A happy 12th birthday to Arjun Janji. Happy 8th birthday to Claire Horst. Happy 14th birthday to Sakit Redajaruju. Happy birthday to Noah Kambarjad, Kambaraj, and happy first birthday to Dara Elise. So you will look forward, please, the town of Newcastle will be putting these wishes up for you on the uh, electronic sign. And again, if you want to wish everyone a happy birthday or you have any community messages, please email us at communitycorner at mynewcastle.org and please note the school. This is a town-sponsored uh, program, not a school board program. Um, all right, anything else from the town administrator report? Okay. So um, we are going to move right into very exciting presentation um, about our climate smart community. And I see people here. Now, had we not been having technical difficulties, I would have stood and had a nice presentation. But we're going to do it seated. Um, so this week is Climate Week in New York, and the theme is getting it done. And Newcastle definitely is getting it done, and I'm proud that we have been a leader in our actions and policies that place importance on climate mitigation, clean energy, and sustainability. The town of Newcastle was the very first community in New York to adopt the Climate Smart Community Pledge. We understood then that we must be stewards of our environment so that we may pass on a healthier and more beautiful earth to our children and future generations. About a year ago, we achieved a bronze status under this program, but that wasn't enough for us. And we accomplished a number of important initiatives since then, like increasing recycling opportunities, installing EV charging stations at the train station, 
instituting a waste reduction education campaign, adopting environmentally friendly purchasing policies, and highlighting our conservation efforts through tree plantings and management of land use as reflected in our zoning code. And on July 8th of this year, I'm pleased to report that Newcastle earned silver status certification, which is the highest level of certification currently available, again, proving us to be a leader in the fight for a cleaner, greener future. Many thanks to our town staff and our entire Climate Smart Community Task Force of Sabrina Charney Hull, Kellen Cantrell, Alyssa Malloy, Bart Carey, Jennifer Meebs Flagg, Kent Thomas, Owen Platt, Tara Castle, Tracy Stein, Victoria Alzapedi and Zachary Woke for all of your work to support Newcastle's efforts to meet the environmental challenges posed by climate change. It has taken a lot of work and a true team effort. So thank you very much. And tonight, on behalf of the town board, I congratulate all of you, as well as the entire town of Newcastle, in achieving our silver status and in combating local climate change reducing our carbon footprint and being true stewards of our environment. And I have a lovely plaque that we can, that we are gonna hang proudly that um, says the town of Newcastle is a silver certified climate smart community and we earned that in 2022. So um, cheers to all of you. Thank you for all your hard work and I look forward to the future. So can we get up and take a picture with the people here? Sure. All right, so you're not going to be able to see us online, but we're going to we're going to take a picture here. All right. Are we going to come here? Or do you want to come down? up here? Can do they, do they want probably to make it? sense for them to get, get front this. And front of yeah, why don't you guys come up here? It's easier than all yeah. of us. Yeah. yeah. Or stand right in front. Can yeah. See you at home. You want yeah, to come up here on the day. Yeah, come up on the day. Do they want to get that close? Yeah, yeah. Stand in front. Just, just, no, no, just, just come here. around. Come around. <laughs> we'll, put the, we'll push the chairs. Okay. In. Yeah, there we go. Well, we'll just push, 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 push yours to the side, and we'll have one in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Push. Push. Can you see here. Take that. I can push that. What are you doing? We're just so everyone can come in the middle. There. Oh, will you take one with your phone, too? Yeah. You're really challenging my abilities. Yeah. I'm telling you, this is a night of all <laughs> media, all right. technology. I am not the person to tell everybody's mentor. Come on, and you guys come in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. Like, you really can't. Oh, yeah. That, oh, wait, that's all right. Zoom, zoom. Yeah, okay, but that's just, that's all right. just, that's yeah. just that. Right? You want to hold it, too? Sure. <laughs> we're looking at we Jill. First, we're looking Jill, at Jill. Jill's camera's right, first. My first. Ready? One, two, three. And now we're looking at Ed. Two, three. He's the taller one. Thank you. Okay. Thank you guys so much. much. Do you want to touch it? <laughs> you deserve to. Yeah, great. We're going to get you into your land. I'm assuming it is made out of recycled material. Both sides? Like the sandwich part? Don't make me laugh. Watch your Watch your Watch your bag. Sorry. All right. Thank you guys for coming. And for all the work you Thank do. Thank you for all the work, yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay, moving on. So we've, um, to public comment, new business. Is there anyone here with public comment or new business? Hi. Hi. Come on, uh, come on up here. No mic today. Hi. Congratulations Hi. on the climate thing. Uh, that's my future as well. I'm Tom Kalish. I live at 48 Overlook Road. And uh, ahead of what I'm about to say, I don't like complaining. Uh, I despise it. But there's a situation going on where I live uh, where uh, the residents behind my house uh, don't live there anymore. And it's become uh, available for photo shoots, film shoots, weddings. Last season of summer, it was an art gallery all summer long. I thought there was a permit. I don't want to hurt these people. I'm not here to win anything, but it's gotten out of control where um, um, I did come and meet with Ms. Shapiro and Mr. DiPoli, and they went out and saw what I was looking at. I have images of what it looks like on a photo shoot day, not a film day. And um, 
I was told, and I didn't look at it myself, that whatever your rule statutes are, that seven permits per 12 months was the rule. But then I was alerted that that only relates to film, not photo. Um, I, I founded a company called Tommy Copper. Uh, I've shot over 50 TV commercials and too many photo shoots. And I, I can tell you with certainty, photo shoots can be worse than film shoots. Uh, the images I have here that uh, you know, I have them time stamped on my, and, and Mr. Tapoli was out of the house that day. Um, she, they have a huge driveway, which goes my entire property. There's not one free space on the driveway, and there's three generator trucks at their house. This is a film shoot. There were over 60 people there that day. Two days, actually. And uh, they did get a permit last second for that, but now I'm told that um, photo shoots are okay. I've also been told in an email from the owner that this is their job, renting that house out to as many shoots and film productions as they possibly can. Uh, I'm the next-door neighbor, and... Uh, I find it hard to even be here to do this, to be honest with you. But it would be, in my situation, if something didn't get better, I would look to leave Newcastle because 7 a.m. to 7, um, it's hard. And, and not that these are good people or bad people, but, you know, last Sunday they snuck a car commercial in with, you know, Sunday morning at 6.45 in the morning. There's trucks flying down the driveway. So I'm here to ask this lovely climate friendly town that I like being in. I've been here for 20 years and I mean that I really like being here. Um, if there's any way you could look at maybe compromising somehow, I'm not saying cut it out. I'm not saying, but you know, you can't just say, well, they could do it 300 days a year. It's going to drop. It's a slippery slope. If it's happening to me. If it happened to 10% of the town. You'd have 20% of the town wanting to leave. So, so that's my, that's my spiel. Ladies and gentlemen. So, Tom, thank you for bringing this to our attention, and, and that's why we're here. No, I know. So don't feel bad about I, I'm just, it. it's not my bucket to start complaining no, no, and pointing I, fingers. I it's just not who I am. But you will be interested to know that uh, last week, last week, yes, in our town board meeting, our work session, we actually discussed amending our, uh, our permits statute to actually no longer exempt still photography for that exact type of situation. And we already set a public hearing on that for October, I think the 18th, right? For October 18th, a public hearing to discuss that, to um, amend that legislation so that it actually would provide you with significant relief they would need um, to obtain a permit if they wanted to do that kind of work. And then they're subject to time restrictions, hour, you know. And the amount of permits per whatever yes. period of time. Yes. This is terrific news. Yes. You know, I'm very happy to hear this. And again, you know, there could even be more of a compromise. I, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting cut the thing off because maybe they need the money. I, I don't know what the situation is. But, you know, the hours, the amounts, and vehicles, you know, the, you know, Right. Their, their property is, it's unfortunate, this situation, I'll, leave, I'll close with this. There's a, almost like it, their driveway's an easement off my property. When that driveway gets full, the unfortunate thing is people will come down my driveway and they'll say, what are you doing here? They'll go, well, we're dropping people off of the chute. It's okay. They're telling me it's okay that they're dropping people off of the chute. Then I go back in the house and the cars haven't left. They go, well, we're waiting for them to be done. We're going to stay here while we... It's like you have to, I don't want to call the, you know, Jill said, call the police. I'm not going to call the police every two minutes for this. So, you know, I'm sure there's a compromise so everybody can win. And I'm happy to be part of that. I, I, I don't, so should, do you want me to attend on the 18th? That would awesome. be great. Yes. Yeah, yes. Please. My mom's birthday. Right. Oh. I'm missing the Yankee game tonight, so yeah. it's bad enough. Oh. It could, could be a big one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, 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 just, 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 Can I go? Just, just, All right, go. Just, 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 the, definition, the definition in our law of filming mm -hmm. had previously excluded still photography. So if it was filming, it was subject to that seven days in any 12 month sure. period. That's what the amendment lease is talking about. So still photography would be folded under that as well. You know, they did a photo shoot for just, you know, how onerous you can get. They did a photo shoot for Prada two years ago, and again, I let them do it. They ruined part of my property so bad, Prada paid me $10,000 to fix it. You know, so it's not just in and out, it's wreckage along the way. And right. so, uh, you know, they don't live there. This is what that house is for. So thank you for hearing me out. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I urge you to come back on the 18th when we have our public hearing. I, I, I will. And your company is super cool. 
Yes. So which company? Topper. Topper. Well, you want to hear about the new company because it fits in well. No, 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 you can't. No, you got to hear it. I don't think you can. No, no. This, this, this December, we're launching a company called Change Diapers, and it's the world's first diaper that's fully biodegradable, made from cotton. Because every diaper that we use today goes in the landfills and never goes away. All right. So your 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 stewards. That's awesome. As a mind moving forward. <laughs> All right. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Thanks for the compliment. <laughs> and if anyone is going to have a baby anytime soon, yeah. you know, I Sometimes if our meeting's long enough, it's going to come in handy. <laughs> that could be arranged for no problem. No, we're all right. <laughs> um, is there any other public comment? And is there, I don't know if, there are people on Zoom who can raise their hand? I don't think so. I'm sorry? No hands are raised. Oh, no hands are raised. Okay, it does work. All right, perfect. Okay. <laughs> Holly? Hi. I, Hi. I didn't know if I was going to be able to participate remotely. I'm glad that I'm able to. Um, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. yes. Um, so just to introduce myself, I'm Holly McCall, I'm resident of Newcastle and currently the president of the Rotary Club of Chappaqua. Uh, and on behalf of the Rotary Club of Chappaqua, I'd like to thank the Newcastle Town Board, the town administration and staff for their support and assistance that resulted in such a spectacular community day this past weekend. Newcastle Community Day is an annual tradition which brings our community together and we've needed it more than ever. This past weekend was an undeniable success. We had perfect weather, wonderful volunteers, amazing setup and planning with our town partners. For those who don't know, the Rotary Club is at its core a service organization. The funds raised from our annual Community Day fundraiser are used to support service projects and contributions to many deserving groups in and around our community. So the Rotary Club of Chappaqua meets most Wednesdays at the Crab, at Crab Trees Kittle House, and I invite you to join us for lunch at one of our upcoming meetings. We'll be debriefing Community Day uh, coming up at our next meeting, but after that, we usually have a guest speaker on something uh, interesting, some service projects or charities that are deserving in town. So thank you all again. All right. Thank you. And thank, thank you. We, we said before, I don't know if you heard us, it was, it was a wonderful day. So thank you yeah, for thank you, Holly. all your hard work. All right. Um, any other hands raised? No other hands are raised. Okay. So um, we did in the middle of some of our difficulties, we actually did some of our uh, agenda uh, resolutions already. So I think, do we just have one more? I think we didn't do the uh, property maintenance, if anyone wants to read that one. Does anyone have the resolution for them? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's the last one. I can do it. Go ahead. Uh, um, authorization to adopt the local law to add Chapter 93 to the Code of the Town of Newcastle regarding property maintenance. I move to adopt a local law to add Chapter 93 to the Code of the Town of Newcastle concerning property maintenance. Can I have a second? I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. That passed. Um, so before we uh, adjourn, is there anything else? No, just a housekeeping. So the board is actually not meeting for the next two weeks. Uh, we're not meeting next week, uh, Jewish holidays, Rosh Hashanah, and the week after that for Yom Kippur. Uh, the next meeting of the town board will be October 11th. Uh, we will be doing budget hearings with staff the evening of the 11th, and then it sort of rolls into them. <laughs> we do let you go home. <laughs> and then we start up the next morning, uh, Wednesday morning. Um, and complete the uh, the budget hearings, um, meetings with staff, um, and then we'll have a short um, town board meeting, just probably a work session, just to cover some loose ends like uh, payment of claims and things like that. So we are going to be taking a little bit of a hiatus. I just wanted the public to know, and then we'll be back on our you know regular schedule come the eighteenth. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Um, and I think, so I think before we adjourn, Tara, you wanted to say something. Yes, and uh, this. 
pains me even more so after the great conversation we had today with the planning board. I think we're about to embark on some really exciting work as a town board, um, but I wanted to share with the residents and my esteemed colleagues on the town board um, that our families made the difficult decision to relocate to New England uh, to be closer to family. Um, that should happen in the next few weeks, and at that time I will be resigning my position as council member. It's been an honor and a privilege to serve this very special community and to participate in shaping the future for a warm, welcoming, resilient, and thriving town. And I want to thank you all for the opportunity to do so. The commitment and dedication this group brings to Newcastle is truly extraordinary, and I'm really excited to see what this board is going to achieve in the months and years ahead for our residents. So thank you all so much, and uh, appreciate the opportunity to serve. Aww. Wow. Um, thank you. Uh, well, not thank you. Are we allowed to just try to keep you and say no? <laughs> but no, I think the whole board understands. Family comes first. Um, that's really important. Um, we will certainly miss you, um, both personally and professionally. As we saw tonight, I think you really bring a lot to the table. So you you will really be, be sorely missed. Um, your insight has been invaluable. And I think the town is better for just having you be able to serve. Thank you so much. But keep us updated as to, as to um, you know, when sure. and if you move. Um, hoping you still change your mind. Uh, but I guess if you don't, if you eventually move and then there's a vacancy, the town board will then um, seek to fill it at that time. Okay. Well, I, I certainly think that it's important to be with family and you shared with me some important things and I don't, I think that's the most critical thing, period, the end. My question that I have is from a perspective of our voters and constituency. I don't know when you had planned on moving. Um, someone had shared a, uh, the housing on the market since June, and I don't know what conversations you've had about uh, this with Lisa or any of my colleagues on the town board. I, I certainly wasn't aware until uh, I think maybe Saturday or Sunday. But I asked that question because if there was a plan to move, there's a three-month period where there could have been a special election. Um, and I know, I know the House was at least on the market in June. I don't, I don't know if it was on before. If that was the plan, whether it was coming to fruition or not, um, in terms of the date, I think it would have been, for transparency purposes, as difficult as it might have been. And again, I'm separating the issue between certainly anyone should move when they want to be closer to family and whatever reason they have. But now we're at a position in place where if you had thought you were moving or there was a likelihood of moving um, and a very real one, we've lost the opportunity to allow voters to make that decision in a special election who could run for your seat. Now, my three colleagues who remain on the town board, and I may agree or disagree, I don't know, are going to appoint somebody um, to fill your seat. And I ask my colleagues here on the town board when you became aware of this and when this was discussed as a possibility because it should have been something, I think, respecting privacy but transparency because we are elected officials and we have an obligation to our constituency to allow them to pick who serves us and represents us. But so re regardless of that, though, are you telling Tara she should have resigned? I, I'm telling, I'm saying Because that there's no vacancy on the board I, until she either becomes disqualified or resigns. A hundred, a hundred, a hundred percent she's still on the town board, but I think it would have been a worthwhile conversation with the entire town board because now we have a situation where in lieu of the public having the opportunity to vote, and and we saw from before, you know, you know, Vicky had the opportunity to come in, but she was presented to the public and people could vote or not vote for Vicky. And ultimately we're here and they voted for Vicky. So it was a different situation where you could fill in a candidate. Now the three of you, and I may agree or disagree, I don't know, are going to pick someone well, to now the fill three the next. Of us. Three of the four of us okay, need but that's, to know how, or certainly, how that. But you, you, we need just three. So now we have, instead of that opportunity and that, that um, what's what we're looking for, transparency for the public to weigh in, potentially vote, uh, and if we knew there was going to be a move, I think 
the right thing to do would have been taking that next step to have that conversation so we can decide collectively what that best next step could be. So I ask you, Lisa, I ask my colleagues, when did you become aware of this and has there been any conversations about who might replace Tara? I'm so I'm sorry, I'm just confused because where Tara just announced that she hasn't moved. There is no well, vacancy. Well, no, I, I just want to, I'd, like to, so I'd like to bring up one important point because um, I don't want to get into all of the details in a public forum in terms of what's happening with the sale of my home, but it is far from imminent, and uh, we still don't know right now if it will actually um, be a completed exercise. So this is an effort to actually be transparent about uh, the scenario because I do feel now that it's more than likely going to transpire. Um, but at any rate, prior to this, it was still a consideration whether or not this would actually take place. So, so I, I appreciate that. And as someone shared a, something from a, a, a community page in another community about, about babysitting, and I, I get that you may or may not be moving, but the other question is when did, you, when did any of the town board know about this conversation? Because it could have been something that could have been valuable to us to figure out possibly next steps. And if ultimately you're going to move, and that was the plan, I think it would have behooved us to give the public the opportunity to vote as opposed to the three or four of us to make that decision on who should replace you. And that opportunity is lost because it's three months prior to, if I believe, the special part of me. Wait, but I'm, prior to the I'm so confused because there's nothing to vote on until Tara either moves or resigns. So even if we knew about this eight months ago or nine months, even if we knew about this the minute she got elected, unless she actually leaves, even when when Ivy left, she announced that she was moving and she had a date set. We couldn't replace anybody until she was actually off the board. It's the same, so, it's the same so, so, thing. So I, I'm, I'm not I, understanding I, well, I'm, what so, conversation I don't know how you don't understand the conversation. If, if, if you know you're going to move, if that's a possibility, I think it's a worthwhile conversation to have. You're serving folks. And let me separate the issues here. No, no one is saying Tara shouldn't or can't or and move in, and, and this zero comment on that. My whole sole comment is when this was a possibility, I think it would be incumbent to share with your colleagues and potentially the community. I know I'm going to be gone at some point, whether it's in three months or four months or six months, as we're leading up to the opportunity to have a special election to let folks know. And ultimately, Tara certainly has every right to stay on or resign or whatever. That's her choice. But in fairness to the public, now they don't have that ability to vote for somebody who they want to have in this position. And if I, and if I know I'm going to move, if I, I, I personally, if I knew I was going to move or strong likelihood I was moving in you know, over the next few months, I wouldn't want you to say, Jeremy, we're going to just appoint someone to take your place. So you would have resigned. I, 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 I would have said, it, you know, if I if I know it was before that that threshold was reached of that three month period, that's something that I would have contemplated. So Wait, that's my know, just to be clear, I should have resigned in advance if there was the possibility if, that I might. If be. you if you knew you had, were going to move, if that was the plan, then I think it would have been fair to let us know and potentially the public know, so that there could have been a vote. In a special election, and now that opportunity is lost. But how could there have been a vote for special election if she didn't resign? There's so, 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 right. So, 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 my question, my yes. question is, and, and and this is the first time Tara has said definitively she's moving to me. So, mm -hmm. so that answers that question from my perspective. But to go back to your other point, if Tara had made the announcement Tara just made tonight a month ago, what would have happened? There would have been no special election. She hadn't resigned. So you're suggesting that the minute Tara thought they might be moving, she should have resigned. No, that's not what I'm suggesting. That is what you're suggesting. No, not, I, well, just otherwise, just let me finish. Otherwise, nothing's different. There exactly. would have been no special election because Tara would not have resigned. And then when Tara eventually did close and decide to move, she would resign, and there'd be either a special election or an appointment. So, I, so I, don't, I, don't su I don't suggest that as soon as you're considering moving that you should resign. Absolutely not, because, I, I, you know, there's very different reasons. A job could fall through. Whatever, whatever the opportunity is that you have or why you're moving may not happen. But it's something that I think that it's incumbent upon us, especially in light of the fact that every single one of, other than Lisa, and now Tara's leaving, has, has moved out of the town. Um, 
I think it would have been incumbent upon us to share that as a real possibility. And maybe Tara would have said, or maybe I would have said, or maybe you would have said, Chris, that you know what, I do plan on leaving. And in good faith, because I know I'm going to be leaving, and there's a very good chance I'm going to be leaving, and I expect to be leaving, that I should allow the public to weigh in on who replaces me. And, and, and that aside, the answer, the, the next question is, when did these conversations occur? Because I certainly wasn't privy to them. So have the three of you ever discussed who might use, who you might be choosing to replace Tara if she should leave? If she should leave? I haven't. Well, of course, you, I'm not you. You wouldn't have had that conversation. But I, I don't know if the three of you, maybe it did, maybe it didn't. Has there been any conversations about who you might consider it, among yourselves? We're, we're just hearing definitively that's tonight the that this is happening. Yeah, that's that's so the that's, that's the answer. We're hearing definitively tonight that Tara will be, may be moving, right? She doesn't even know, right, if it's going to close or when. You said maybe in the next well, few it's weeks. Apparently, a moving target, so. Okay, so it may not even happen as far. So we're going to, so, if well, and when she resigns, we will figure it out. But I do think it's a conversation, now that you've said this, that we should start having as to who might be a likely replacement if, if now that I mean, you've said it's more can, likely than My question, than Lisa, though, is, can, my can. question, again, Lisa, is, is was not, not now that it's definitive, has this been an ongoing conversation? Because it's interesting that this is now coming to light after I reached out to Tara and you on Sunday, and now all of a sudden it's Tuesday and now it's being shared. So I, I imagine this has been something that's been in the works and a bit of conversation for some time. And, and your response back to me in substance was, that it was a possibility. So, you know, Jeremy, I just want to say, was there a conversation I, I about know, a possible replacement? I, know, I didn't like, know that Sarah would be making this announcement tonight. I didn't know that. So, I'm, I'm just giving you a sense of what we knew. And I do know that moving is a highly personal decision, and, you know, it's a different process for everyone. I know that, you know, when I've thought of moving in my life, it's always started with an idea. And as you know, an idea progresses to reality, sure. or sometimes it doesn't. So there's a continuum, and it's highly personal for everybody. So I, 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 I don't if know anyone what wants more to answer the question there is whether there's a say. conversation about a replacement or not. That, that's I, I, I feel like you're making an inappropriate insinuation, which I don't really don't appreciate. Um, but we know now that this is going to happen, so I think the board should sit down and, and discuss. To be candid, Jeremy, political maneuvering was not really top of mind in this scenario for me. So um, I, I, I don't know what else to say other than that. That's, you know, political maneuvering for the town board of a town that I'm no longer going to be living in if this transpires was not my priority. I, I'm not situation. suggesting that it was. I'm suggesting that the circumstances that have now come to be could have been avoided, and I'm curious as to whether or not my colleagues who want to answer the question have discussed the replacement. So, whether or not they have, we are where we are, um, and that's that. So, I think just looking at you, Tara, right now, I, I can see that this was really a difficult decision. So, I, I apologize if there's been added stress for tonight. Um, I. I well, Tara, I just want to say we're really going to miss you. I know I'm going to miss your company. And uh, I think we all as a town will miss you. And certainly we will feel the loss of your expertise as well. But I, I really wish you well, whatever ends up happening. Thanks. I wish you well. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, you're, you're really going to be missed because we could use you. <laughs> but I, I understand and I... I, I I understand, and, and family is most important, and I understand why you're moving. As do I, Tara. Don't, please don't conflate the two issues. They're very distinct, and I appreciate and respect what you're doing, and I've said that to you before, and I mean that with complete sincerity. Um, my concern was over communication disclosure among the town board and elsewhere, but I 100% I share their sentiment, and I mean that genuinely. So I apologize if you feel that this was something that I'm a challenge in attacking you for your decision that's not to move, that's not remotely. And I've said that to you offline as well. No, thank you, Irish. Okay, on that note, uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.